Hey guys, Tom here from the Investing with Tom YouTube channel. Welcome back to the channel. What the heck? Yo, dude, I'm back, I'm back. Why the heck are you filming a video? It's hot outside, it's summertime, the fish are biting. Get out of here, man. I mean, it is a beautiful day outside, but I mean, uh, we've got to give the viewers a video. Who's going to make a video? Bro. Dude. Bro, what about that Josh Wang guy? You know, you usually come in here with some terrible ideas, but that is actually not a bad one. I've been watching a few of Josh's videos lately. Let me just introduce the guy and then I'll come fishing with you, I promise. All right, everyone, so I'm off to catch some fish, um, going on holiday, lying in the sun, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm going to leave you here with Josh Wang. Uh, I have asked Josh to make a video for the channel and he has kindly obliged, so that takes a bit of work off my back and keeps you guys entertained. Um, Josh is an up and coming sort of finance YouTuber in New Zealand. There's not a lot of us here, so definitely check out his channel if you haven't seen it already. It will be the first link in the description and also the pinned comment below. Uh, so show Josh some love. I hope you enjoy the video. Uh, thank you, Josh, for making this video. It does allow me to go fishing, so <laughs> thanks very much. Um, hope everyone enjoys this video of Josh wrapping up uh, some lessons from 2019 in the stock market. So here we go. Man, how's this camera thing even work? Technology is crazy. Hi guys, my name is Josh and I'm from the Josh and Wang YouTube channel. I want to thank Tom for having me on here today. In this video, I wanted to talk about some of the lessons that um, we can take out of 2019. Um, so 2019 was a good year for most investors. If you have invested in the broader market, you would have made, you know, year to date about about 30%, which is superb, okay? Um, that's not to mean that we know everything now. Um, there are still things that we can take out of it and we can still learn. Or if we already know um, about these things, um, this year was definitely a good reminder for some of these lessons. So in this video, I wanted to talk about um, three lessons that um, I've been reminded of um, during um, this year. Okay, so um, the first lesson that I wanted to talk about is that um, we need to be able to handle volatility. Okay, 2019 was a very volatile year. Um, we had news coming from all directions to signal a recession. Just because the market's gone up, a lot of these fund managers have, have called out recession, recession. We had the trade war, you know, Trump's tweets. Those were a highlight of this year. Um, a lot of news on trade war, um, a lot of forecasts you know a lot of forecast guidance lowered by companies because of the potential impact of these trade wars and um, we also had the hong kong protests the whole situation there you know was a bit hostile and that also was a cause of concern for the global economy okay so we had a lot of news that would have caused this volatility so if we look at the largest um, daily point losses, the top 20 in history, 2019 actually made up four of those days, okay? So needless to say, a very volatile year. Um, one thing that's interesting to note is that following these days where the index dropped um, a significant amount, um, the following days and the following weeks um, led to new highs, okay? The market was very resilient and that, you know, each time there was a large drop, the market continued to recover, continued to rally, okay? So um, a mistake was to, you know, get caught up in the volatility and panicked when you saw a large red number in your portfolio and you sold out. Okay, so, you know, one question that you have to ask yourself was how did you react to the volatility? You know, you, you might have experienced a large drop in your portfolio. The worst thing that you want to do is to sell stocks at a loss, okay? Um, especially when it's not warranted. So, for example, if you own a business and the business has not changed at all fundamentally, but because the economy is bad, you sell your business, even though it's the same business as it was before. OK, and we might not even know if the economy is bad, you know, the economy might be doing really well. And later on, we found out that the economy is actually doing really well when we had record low unemployment numbers coming out from the US. OK, so we shouldn't sell stock because of, you know, large swings in volatility. Um, we should only sell stocks when there's a fundamental change in the business. So what I mean by that is that some factors might change, which causes the business 
to operate differently. So for example, if the business model is impacted by regulation, then this might be a, you know, a long-term impact on the um, ability of the business to generate cash flows. So this is a, uh, a long-term impact on the business and fundamentally that has changed and that might warrant us to sell stock. Okay, um, what does not warrant us to sell stock is just because of news of a potential recession, we get scared and we sell because that's usually how we crystallize um, paper losses is when we panic sell. If you can't handle volatility, then one option that you might consider is to selling um, more of equities and you know topping up on cash. That, that would help reduce the volatility of your portfolio. Um, just remember, this is not financial advice. Um, this is purely for entertainment purposes only. Um, so do they take that into consideration as well when making any financial decisions, okay? Also important to note is that I do think that next year will be a lot more volatile. 2020 should be a very volatile year because you have a lot of events coming up. Um, you know, hopefully by then um, there'll be a trade deal done. If not, you know, expect continued volatility. Um, we can also expect um, the U.S. elections to cause a lot of volatility there as well. So 2020 will probably be a more volatile year, um, if not just as volatile as 2019. So being able to position yourself to handle volatility will be a um, great thing to do and a good skill to have um, to prepare yourself for 2020. So the second lesson that I wanted to talk about is that we shouldn't get caught up in the noise, okay? So noise is basically um, useless information that's not helpful for us in terms of determining um, what the future value of stocks are, okay? A lot of this noise is short term. So for example, like Trump's tweets about the trade war, um, you know, those were short term impacts and then, you know, following days and following weeks, the market just recovered. So a lot of this noise was unhelpful for us to make decisions on, okay? And the analysts are probably in part um, driving this um, panic because they, they act on noise. They can be very myopic in that they focus on one specific factor and they ignore everything else. During 2019, a lot of analysts have um, decreased their earnings estimates because of um, the potential impact of trade wars um, between the US and China, between the US and other countries as well. And, you know, because of that, stocks um, dropped. Okay, but later on, when earnings season came, um, the companies were able to beat you know a lot of these earnings estimates because um, the trade war didn't have as much of an impact um, as you know the market expected it to what this is is basically noise right it, noise was um, you know unhelpful information that caused a lot of havoc in the markets and if we were able to see through the noise we we would have been able to top up on stocks that were undervalued because of all the noise so for example one good example was apple's earnings so at the start of the year on the 3rd of january you know there was a shock downgrade from apple which basically caused um, global markets to be shook a lot of these analysts say it's not going to be just Apple. There's going to be a heck lot of U.S. companies that have sales in China um, that you know are going to be watching for their earnings to be downgraded. You know, we also have Goldman Sachs saying that there could be more bad news coming out from Apple, and um, it's going to turn to custard. It's going to head in the same direction as Nokia. Business is bad. Everything is bad. The world's going to end. Okay. So that is noise because what we can see going um, past that month was that Apple had a very stellar year, right? Apple share price year to date basically is up 76%. So needless to say, all that noise was unwarranted, okay? People feared more than they should have feared um, because they might not necessarily have a full understanding of all the factors in play. They only focus on one specific thing. One thing that you need to do is not be focused too much on one number because what it could be is that that number might be only a short-term um, impact, okay? It might not necessarily have a long-term impact on the business and, and certainly in Apple's case, that was a short-term impact on the business. 
I think one good way to avoid getting caught up in the noise is to understand the fundamentals of the businesses that you're holding. Okay, if you understand the fundamentals of the businesses that you hold, what drives the businesses, certain key um, indicators, key numbers that will cause the company to do well. And um, being able to understand that will help you eliminate a lot of noise that's not helpful for your decision making. So that's lesson number two. The third lesson that 2019 um, reminded us is to not try to time the market. 2019 was a great year and if you tried to time the market thinking that a recession would come in 2019 then you were probably wrong and you would have missed out on a lot of the gains in the market. Now I'm not saying you should always be long in, in stocks, you know, there's certainly a time um, to rebalance your portfolio depending on, like I said, your, your, your risk um, tolerance, your ability to handle volatility. But timing the market in general to try to make a lot of money is generally not a good idea because um, there are only two things that you need to get right if you're trying to time the market. is to be able to buy low and to sell high. And, and it sounds simple, but in reality, it's a lot harder to do those things. Because if, if you're waiting for a significant drop in 2019, you might have a 3% daily drop, but that's not close to a 20% drop like most recessions have. And if you are hoping for a recession, then you didn't get one in 2019. Um, and, and the market has continued to increase more than its drop during the year. So timing the market would not have worked in 2019. If you want to get into the market and you're looking at the prices now and it's um, looking like it's really ridiculously high, which valuations are a bit stretched, um, you know, what you might consider is to dollar cost average in. Don't try to time the market. It's all, it always pays well to be in the market, be invested in the market, right? You know, there's a famous saying, um, time in the market is better than timing the market. Time in the market is better than timing the market. Don't try to time the market, guys. Um, you know, invest in good businesses, dollar cost average in, and um, enjoy the ride, really. So um, those are the three lessons that, you know, that I think 2019 really teaches us, really reinforces in us. So um, I hope you guys found value in that, and hopefully these lessons will set you up for another good year in 2020. All right, so um, if you enjoy content like this, be sure to check out my channel. I'm sure Tom would have left a link down in the description below. And I wanna thank Tom for the opportunity um, to make a video here today. So um, until then guys, take care.